Hey there folks, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you can make it because today we've got a quick little behind the scenes update as we have been testing a brand new prototype smoking it smoker. For those of you who are not familiar with this channel, we've been using the model 4D digital Wi-Fi unit from smoking it smokers exclusively for I don't even know how long, seven, eight years, something like that, and we absolutely love it. In their catalog though, they start with a Model 1 and they go all the way up to a Model 5. They have digital, they have Wi-Fi, they have analog, lots of different choices. Steve over at Smoking at Smokers contacted me and asked if I wanted to test a brand new prototype smoker, the Model 6, destined to be bigger and better than all the other smokers in his line and of course you know I'm gonna say yes. Now I did tell Steve that I was probably gonna run it harder than anyone should run a smoker and so if it can pass my test it is a winner. And so that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today in this video. I'm gonna show you just a couple little tests that we did and then at the end of this video I'm gonna share with you the good, the bad, the ugly and uh, we'll see what happens. Let's receive that smoker. Check out this number six next to a number four smoker. Absolutely ridiculous. Almost twice the size. This is a two-door smoker with the possibility of putting six racks on the bottom and nine racks on the top. Fifteen potential racks. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. From floor to ceiling, you've got 56 and a half inches in this vertical smoker. And there's a lot of really cool things going on with this smoker. Number one being the space. You have got an ample amount of space between each one of the racks, depending on what you're cooking. I mean, you can do a lot of smoked burgers in this smoker, but if you remove every other one of the racks, you've now doubled your space, perfect amount of room for your large birds, your packer briskets, your pork shoulders. Incredible. Let's go ahead and take the measurement of the depth of this smoker. And it looks like we are at 28 inches deep. All right, 28 inches deep. And how wide is it? 21 and a half inches wide. Wow, that is perfect because you could take a hotel pan and slide it right on in with a little bit of clearance on the right uh, for airflow and a little bit of clearance on the left for airflow. And that fits beautifully. Now, not only can you put one in, but let's go ahead and put a second one in just to see how that fits. So we're gonna slide that to the back. I don't wanna touch in the back because I do want airflow moving around at all times. So we're gonna slide a second one in and see if uh, it's a little tight. And you know what? Right about here, we've got about an inch and a half space between the pans, which is incredible. That means you could stick up to 28 or even 30 hotel pans in this smoker, depending on your rack placement, um, which can also double as a warmer if you need to keep things warm. So absolutely amazing. Let's go ahead and pull these trays out. And let me just give you an idea of what we're talking about when it comes to space. Each one of these racks can easily hold two packer briskets, possibly three, depending on what the size, but let's just go with two. That means this thing could smoke 14 briskets at a time. When it comes to pulled pork, I'm seeing four pork shoulders per rack. That's a total of 21 to 28 pork shoulders. That's a lot of pulled pork. Chickens, forget about it. I'm looking at nine per rack and that's 50 to 60, maybe even more uh, chickens in this smoker. And then of course, you've got my favorite thing to smoke, which is sausages. And I'm thinking 120, 150 pounds easy. So yeah, this big boy is built with one thing in mind and that is taking care of business. Let's take a look at this other super cool feature. Notice that vent in the very back of the smoker. Let's go ahead and remove this rack so you can see it a little bit better. There is a ductwork that comes from the very bottom all the way to the very top. And there's a fan at the bottom that's designed to draw air in, to pull air in and blow it out the top, creating this convection style smoker, which has a ton of benefits. If it works, this should heat your smoker up a lot faster. It should get rid of any of those hot zones that some of these smokers are known for, and it should cook your food a lot faster as well with that hot air just constantly being recirculated. So really looking forward to testing this prototype out and seeing how it works. Let's get started. All right, let's take a look at the control panel, and it looks like we're dealing with a really beefed up version of the typical PID system that 
smoking it uses. Obviously, we've got a couple uh, temperature probes here at the bottom. We've got a cabin temperature probe and a couple external food probes. We also have a couple outlets right here on the side. We're going to plug the system's fan to that first outlet, auxiliary one, and then the second one is reserved for like your cold smoke generator or something like that. Our temperature probes are placed at the bottom and in the middle, and I want to see how quick this gets to temperature and what the temperature looks like throughout the unit itself. This number six gets plugged into a 220 single phase outlet and let's power the unit on for test number one. Now, this version 1.0 prototype is not Wi-Fi. So we're going to have to manually adjust the settings. And this is a pretty common screen if you're familiar with smoke and its setup. You've got the smoker temp. You've got what it's set to. Food and probe three are the external probes. So all you've got to do is hit the set button one time and that's going to get you into the menu all right just like that and if you want to adjust the setting you hit set again and the temperature will start flashing at which point you can go ahead and set it we're going to set the temperature on this smoker to something that you normally wouldn't set it to we're going to really put this to the test i'm going to crank it up to 350 degrees fahrenheit this isn't a temperature that i recommend you run your smoker at but for this prototype test we are going to push it to the limit and see what happens we're going to run this for about six and a half hours and um, set a little timer and see what happens. How long does it take to get to 350 F? Well, through the power of editing, an hour and 45 minutes has now passed. And it looks like we are at 350 uh, for the smoker, which is what we set it at. Both our probes are reading fairly close, 343 and 347. And as far as getting to temp, I think that that took a little bit longer than it should. I felt like we should have gotten there a little bit quicker. Let's uh, go ahead and open it up and see how the fan is kicking. We've got the fan on right now. And you know what? I got to tell you, I'm not really feeling a lot of hot air blowing at me. It's uh, It doesn't feel like any air is moving, actually, whatsoever. So let's go ahead and look at the fan while the unit is on and it is not moving off on let's take another peek at it that fan should be spinning right about now and it is not spinning so you know what we're going to do we're going to open up the back panel and take it all apart and i am met with problem number one that should not be that color that looks like we had some sort of a burning issue and yep there it is burnt to a crisp let's look at the ductwork. pretty simple design Sitting on the back of the smoker, the fan placement is at the very bottom, almost directly behind the heating element, which I think is going to be the problem. Now, we did run it at 350, and that little fan should have kept up no problem. Now, with that being said, if you have a smoker like this, 320 Fahrenheit is about the hottest you want to run your smoker. Perfect for doing a hot and fast smoked chicken. So, little motor, could not handle the heat, burn it up, and there's that. So, let's go ahead and just put everything back together. Uh, do one more quick little test uh, for this. But as of right now, this is a fail. The entire convection system uh, and the design does not work for this particular smoker. So we are not going to put any food in it. What I am going to do is put some rocks in it. How does that sound? We are going to do something called auto-tuning the smoker. I just want to see how close uh, to the original settings we are for this. And if you're not familiar with what auto-tuning is, auto-tuning is a way to kind of calibrate your smoker. Uh, you can fill it up with something that has mass, something that'll take on some heat, set the temperature to a temperature that you typically cook at. In my case, it'll be 225. Click the auto tune option on, and then this will begin to calibrate or fine tune your system. And for this prototype test, what we're doing right here is completely unnecessary because the fan doesn't work. And so the basic functionality of having that convection, we're not gonna really benefit from, but I just wanna see how far off the original settings were from uh, the auto tune. So let's go ahead and power it on. And to do the auto tune, we need to get into the control settings, press and hold set. Once you see the option control setting, press set again. And now you're in the settings menu and we're just gonna scroll down until we get to the auto tune option. Along the way, you're gonna notice the P, I, and D settings. So there's the P, notice it's set to 60. There's the I, the integral, it's set to 850. And then there's the derivative, it's set to 130. I would jot those down and keep it safe somewhere. That way you can always restore your smoker back to factory default. There's the auto tune option. We're gonna turn that to on and that's it. Hit the set button to get it going. We're gonna hit the back button twice. That's gonna get us out of the menu one more time. And there you go. 
It now says auto tuning. Please wait. This process does take several hours. And like I said, for this prototype test, it's completely unnecessary, but I just wanted to personally see. Now I'm going to wrap this video up by letting you know what the results for the auto tune were and what I feel this smoker has got going for it and what I personally would like to see changed uh, and in the final product. So Let's talk about it. All right, folks, time to share with you some behind the scenes thoughts. This is the kind of information that uh, I made some notes here that I'm sharing with Smoke and its Smokers in hopes to help co-create an absolutely epic smoker that is clearly designed for serious cookouts. You guys already saw it. Prototype test number one was an epic fail, almost right out of the chute, primarily because that little fan motor couldn't handle the heat. It burned up, rendering the entire convection system useless. And you know, some of you ask, what is the prototype testing process like? This is it. It's a very frustrating and painstaking process. We basically have to test this unit harder than anyone would ever test it. We are constantly looking for problems, no matter how big or how small. And then we report all that data back to uh, smoke in it in this case. And rarely is version 1.0 of a prototype the same as the final product, because there is usually lots of changes that happen in between. So I'm super pumped to be a part of this evolution. And I cannot wait to see what the final product is gonna look like. As it stands right now, let me share with you what I like about the Model 6 prototype unit. I love this space. The space in the smoker is extraordinary. You got 15 racks fully loaded. You could put two full hotel pans back to back on each rack. That is unbelievable by itself. Think about how many smoked burgers you can make at a time. And if you lay your sausages on those racks, wow, I'm thinking 200 pounds, easy, not a problem. If you remove every other rack, you now open up that space. You have seven spots where then you could cook your larger stuff, your packer briskets, your, your pulled porks, your chickens, your turkeys, whatever you want, your hams, forget about it. And you know, I never even talked about ribs in this smoker. My guess, you could probably put 80, 90 baby backs easy, not a problem. Another feature I'm super thrilled about is the convection system. Now, unfortunately, ours broke almost immediately, so I really couldn't run it through the ringer. But in theory, a convection system should get your smoker to temp a lot faster and help it maintain those temps a lot more evenly, which means it will either greatly reduce or completely eliminate heat zones. And we all got them, the dreaded heat zones. Meat always cooks faster, when it's closer to the heat source and it cooks slower when it's further away, having that constant convection of hot air moving across your meat, keeping everything at the exact same temperature, I cannot wait to give that a test. The other thing that I'm super excited about with a convection system is that also, once again, in theory, um, it should cook your meat a lot faster. So you know you've got these really long cook times on your you know, pork shoulders or your briskets where you end up having to do a Texas crutch to get it past that temperature. This might possibly eliminate as that warm, hot air could help evaporate some of that moisture that's built. I don't know. Once again, we're talking about theoretical stuff, but I am super pumped to get a working model. Now let's talk about what didn't work, a few different ideas that I had along the way during some of my tests. And you know, if I had a wish list to put together, this is where we're going to talk about that. First and foremost, the fan and the motor. I think that the fan and the motor need to be rated for a much, much higher temperature. Minimum 400, 450, possibly 500 degrees, I think would be ideal. Also, I think the fan placement in this particular case was detrimental, but it did expose a problem. I think that the fan placement should not be at the very bottom behind the heating element. That's where the hottest bit of air is gonna be coming right at it. I think it should be probably closer to the top, maybe in the middle, and I don't think it should be in the smoker. I think it should be external. So that way you can kind of cool off the fan and have a different cooling system um, that protects the fan from these high temperatures. As far as fan size, I'm not sure whether this size was adequate because we were never really able to test it out, but I do think a bigger fan uh, size, you know, would be ideal, especially if there's some sort of a switch or a knob that allows you to control the speed of the fan. I think that would be really cool. After removing the back panel to access that burnt fan, I did find that that entire process was a little cumbersome, especially since we only needed to get into that one little part, you know, taking it apart, putting it all back together. I thought, you know, maybe there's a better way. So I did talk to Steve over at Smoke It, and he actually had this brilliant idea of creating access panels behind the smoker that allows you to have maybe like quick access to certain areas, whether it's the heating element, whether it's the fan, whatever uh, moving forward. And so I do have a feeling that access panels are gonna be a part of the finished product, which I'm super encouraged about. One thing I did think after removing the back panel, now once again, I was not able to test this, 
but I felt like the ductwork that draws that hot air in and then pumps it through the top could be a little bit bigger and maybe even perhaps the bottom hole and then the exit hole at the top, the entry and exit holes could be a little bit wider and that would actually make more sense with a larger fan. I, think, I guess with the size fan that we had in the system right now, it was a bit appropriate. Another thing that I noticed is that it took a little bit longer to get to cooking temp than I would have preferred. Now, granted, we set it to 350, and if you have a smoke it smoker, just FYI, your max operating temp should be no more than about 300 or 320 degrees. But remember, we are pushing this to the limit, and I did feel like that two hour, hour and 50 minutes that it took to get to 350 degrees could have been drastically cut. Now, We'll never know uh, because the convection system wasn't working, and I do believe that that is going to increase uh, the time that it gets to cooking temp. But also, I believe that the heating element that's in this particular unit could be a little more powerful, maybe a little bit bigger, especially with the amount of space that it's trying to heat up. So bigger heating element, more powerful heating element would be uh, my suggestion in this particular spot. And for those of you curious as to whether or not the auto-tune did anything for the smoker, truth is that really wasn't a fair test because the convection system wasn't working. If the convection system would have been working, the auto-tune results would have been completely different. But the results that it gave me delivered almost identical uh, results. So it really didn't do a whole lot in that regard. Now, with that being said, if you own a smoke it smoker and you want me to make a dedicated video on the controller and the control panel and how to access and what the different settings mean inside that configuration settings so you can get the most out of your smoker, be sure to drop me a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section below. Overall, the unit is built extraordinarily well. I mean, you get the same quality build with smoking and smokers from the unit one as you will the unit six, which I find incredibly encouraging. I did find though that the screw heads where you attach the wheels to the bottom to the base of the smoker uh, were a tiny bit too large and they weren't allowing those wheels to swivel, making it a little difficult to move around. But that's just kind of one of those things. A uh, different screw will certainly fix that problem. The latches on the unit had a nice tight seal, just just like all their other units. Once it got to temperature, it kept its temperature. Uh, now, once again, this is without the convection system and it kept it within one degree. So the controller, the particular control system that's used in this particular model uh, just does an extraordinary job of dialing in that temperature. Now, speaking of the controller, I do wish that this would have been a Wi-Fi unit. Obviously, this is a prototype unit, and I think adding Wi-Fi to it is pretty simple, but I do think that that should be part of the system because you are then able to access it through the Smoke In It app, which makes things incredibly convenient, super easy, especially when you're doing like five, six program steps like we often do in our videos. All right, folks, there you have it. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thanks for joining me on this prototype testing process a little bit behind the scenes. You kind of get to see the journey of what a product ends up looking like from beginning all the way to the end. And I got to tell you, I can't wait to share part two of this particular series because I'm looking forward to hopefully some pretty big changes and some pretty big updates. Thanks a lot for being here. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel. And if you like this video or found it enjoyable in any way, give me a great big thumbs up. If you have any questions about the Model 4 Smoke It Smoker that I use and my experience or the Model 6 prototype that we've been playing with, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And also, if you have any suggestions as to certain key features that you would like to see in a upgraded, smoking its smoker be sure to leave those in the comment section below as well thanks a lot for watching folks we'll see you in the next one bye bye